Another example of a deliberative control architecture is NHC or nested hierarchical controller created by Meistel. It easily identified the primitives since plan and act. The key contribution is the decomposition of the planner into three components, including the mission planner, the navigator, and the pilot. It was different from strips because it interleaves planning and acting. One disadvantage is that the planning is only appropriate for navigation tasks. So we would say of the three types of paradigms we had talked about, plan, measure error, and world models, we would call this one the plan or top-down approach. The next kind we're gonna talk about is NIST, the real-time control system. It was designed by Albus for intelligent industrial manipulators. It was also called the NIST real-time control system. It used NHC in the design and it was used for military unmanned vehicles. The main difference was the sensory perception model used pre-processing or feature extraction between the sensor and fusion into the world model. It was well suited for semi-autonomous control. The human operator provided the world model, decided the mission, and decomposed it into a plan and actions. Then the robot would carry out the actions. As robotics advances, the robot moved up the autonomy hierarchy. Here's another diagram used to represent the NIST real-time control system. Some of the disadvantages in the RCS was planning and updating a global world model was slow. Sensing and acting were disconnected. The dependence on the world model had a frame problem. Remember, frame problem has to do with storing symbolic information to represent the world as well as running out of space to do so. Uncertainty such as sensor noise and actuator error were not addressed. It takes a long time to search a large state space. There was a combination of analog and digital sensory data which created a large sensor state space. And when the sensor state space combined with internal models or representation, the state is very large and hard to search. If the planning is slow compared to the robot motion, it has to stop and wait for the plan to finish. To make progress, the robot must plan rarely and move as much as possible, which is open loop control and bad for dynamic systems. It takes a great deal of space or memory storage to represent the robot's state space representation. Commu computer memory is cheap, but all memory is finite and some algorithms may run out of it. In addition, the planner assumes that the state space representation is accurate and up to date. The plan will not be useful if this is not a valid assumption. Representation used must be updated and checked as often as necessary to keep it accurate for the task. Updating the plan for a real environment requires taking time to update the world model. Therefore, the plan is only useful if the environment does not change during execution in a way that affects the plan, which we've talked about before. And the robot knows the state of the world and the plan it is in at all times. Finally, the robot's effectors are accurate enough to execute each step of the plan. Uncertainty such as sensor noise and actuator error were not addressed. Fate of deliberative systems. Due to these challenges, purely deliberative architectures are no longer used for the majority of physical robots. However, robot surgery, which was shown on the prior slide, is one system that can use deliberative systems because it requires a great deal of advanced planning and no time pressure, and the environment, in this case the patient's body, is kept perfectly static. Another good place where deliberative control architectures are still used would be in AI, such as in an intelligent chess system, as well as in the Watson system. That could have used an architecture similar to a deliberative control. And this concludes today's lecture on hierarchical control architecture. Have a robotastic day.